Welcome back to the Java 4 Beginners Tutorial Series. I am Damien, and today we're going to be talking about a bunch of random crap, because it seems like a good idea to get the random crap out of the way. Oops, sorry, I was just correcting somebody else's work there. Alright, so. Um, I feel like I should talk just briefly about, uh, the way I graded things and why I grade them that way before I really continue on. Um, sorry if there's some background noise too. Apparently someone's weed whacking next door. So, um, Assume that I have uh, a lot of variables that I'm declaring. Let's just say I, I make int a, b, c, d, e, f, and g, right? And then I'm going to do a system dot out dot println. And let's say for each one I say enter the first variable. Alright, so let's say I have a bunch of these. And then the way we're going to do it is say um, a equals input dot next int. And then we're just going to copy this down. C, D, E, F, G. Alright, so then we're just going to, uh, to copy this all the way up. Alright, now assume I have that big block of nonsense right there. Um, and then I have something along the lines of if a is greater than 10, do blah, else, don't do blah. And, you know, let's just repeat that over and over and over again, right? Okay, so again, that's G, F, E, D, C, B, A. Okay, so, as you can see, we've just quickly generated about 70 lines of code just doing if-elses. Now, assume that we don't have any commenting here. How are you going to differentiate these variables from one another? How are you going to make them mean something to somebody who has never seen your code before? How do they know whether or not A is somebody's social security number, or if it's what someone's paid, or... You know, there's a lot of different things. So, adding comments to explain what each of your variables are, not only when you declare them or fill them, um, if you're going to be declaring variables like this, you don't necessarily have to say A is this and B is that, no. But where you take it in, it might be nice, you know, if you're going to be taking them all in sequentially like this. So you might say something like A is the house number of the person. And it's, it's really just so somebody who hasn't read your code can read it more easily. But that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, I know that a lot of people might have felt that it was unfair that I did that uh, on the homework, but it's really helpful when you get a new multi-line, multi-file uh, um, programs, you know, because then you're going to be dealing with a whole lot of things, and knowing how they interact in a timely fashion is really valuable. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about uh, a new kind of structure that we haven't talked about yet. And it's known as while. And while is going to change the way that we program. Um, I'm going to just declare an int and name it i. Um, whenever I, I use a single letter uh, number, uh, i, j, k, l, m, you'll see me use throughout this series. Uh, that means it's going to be a counter, and it's most likely going to be used in what's known as a counter-controlled loop. Now, the syntax for while is almost exactly the same as an if, so we'll say down here, and while. 
and this is uh, just end main. And that's end class. So what we need to do is we need to say while i is less than, let's just pick a number here, 10. Let's just do system.out.println i. And now I'm just going to run this because I want to show you guys something. Now you can see here that i is equal to 0 and this statement is going to run until i is 10. Now if this decides it wants to run, there we go, you'll notice that it's just printing out 0 over and over and over and over and over again. And the reason why is because I didn't actually do anything to our counter. And the simple way for us to increment our counter or increase it by 1 is to type i++. Plus plus. That's what's known as a post uh, increment, meaning it hits the number, it sees that the number is 0, and then it increases it to 1. There is also uh, pre-incrementing, and there's also decrementing on both sides as well with minus minus. But for now, we're just going to use plus plus, and you'll see that it counts from 0 up to 9. Assume that I wanted to count from 1 to 10, I could say uh, i plus 1 up here, or I could initialize i to 1 and print out i and make i less than 11. Now, typically, when you're using uh, any kind of code, you want to initialize i to 0, or you want to initialize it to 1 and use less than or equal to. And we'll talk more about that in a short little while. Um, for now, just get kind of used to this syntax. Um, as you can see, it, it automatically prints things out. You know, I only have one system dot out here. And it's printing 10 times until the condition of this loop is no longer less than 10. So each time through, it's making i one larger. Now, another thing that I wanted to cover is a different kind of loop that is almost the same as the while loop. And that loop is known as the do while loop. Um, and I always screw up the uh, notation on this. So you're really going to have to pardon me. Uh, let's try this. So do system.out.println of i while, and we're going to set i back to zero here. Um, and then while i is less than 10. Okay, and I think that's right. It's been a long time since I've used a do while. Um, what this actually means is that it's going to do this while that condition is not true. And you might say, well, isn't that exactly what this does? And the answer is yes. It is the exact same thing with one little caveat. And the difference is it will do this once, even if this condition is false. So if we give this a run, you're going to notice that it just prints out 0 to 9 twice, which perhaps isn't really that useful. But assume we get rid of this i equals 0. It's going to print through, and now it's going to go from 0 to 10, because when this loop was no longer able to be iterated through because i was equal to 10, it hit this do statement, and it did this, and then it checked to see, is it okay for me to continue doing this? And the compiler came back and said, no, you're done. So do is useful when you need to do something at least once. If you don't have to do it at least once, then there's really no purpose for you to be using it. Um, hmm. I have about five minutes, so I'm going to try to teach you guys a little something. Now, you'll notice that I use this uh, i is less than 10. That means, well, if we start at 0 and we go to a number, it means that the loop will execute exactly that number of times. If we say i is equal to 1, that is actually how a lot of what are known as off by 1 errors begin. So if we're going to use 1, we always want to use less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, or, you know, whatever we're going to be using. Um, 
unless it's absolutely essential not to, I really recommend just using setting your counter equal to zero and just using less than. There will be times when that's not possible, but while possible, uh, do that. Now, there are is one other type of loop that I'm actually going to be covering next uh, video. But for now, I, I don't want to continue too much more, but I feel the need to, uh, to show you guys one other thing. So in the past, we've talked about uh, compound operators, right? Well, in this case, and I'm just going to reinitialize i to zero there. In this case, we have i plus plus. But if we said i plus equals 2, would that work? And how about i multiplied by equals and then 2? So you'll notice that we've generated ourselves uh, an infinite loop here. And let's take a quick thought about why. Now, when we're using i here, it's checking to see uh, or not there, here, it's checking first to see what i is equal to, and we set it equal to 0. And 0 times 2 is equal to 0. Now assuming that we run this again and set that equal to 1, this first loop is going to generate uh, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, and this second loop is going to generate 1, 2, 4, 8. Now, assuming I did something along the lines of uh, 4096, I believe, is a uh, power of 2. And so that'll work all the way up to less than 4096. So, as you can see, uh, loops allow us to do anything that requires a great deal of repetition, and it allows us to do it in such a way where we have control over it. Um, I haven't really shown you too much about uh, different ways that we can control our loop. I haven't shown you too many different ways that we can get out of the loop. But for now, just this knowledge of, you know, us being able to control uh, something until we tell it to stop is something that I want you guys to take a little bit of time to get your heads around, and we'll progress onwards from there. Alright, this is Damien, and this has been another Java for Beginners production, uh, part of the cpp4beginners.com tutorial series, although we might be moving uh, to a new website very shortly due to how crappy Freeforms is as a host. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this. I'll toss some comments on this and uh, upload it over to IDE1 for you guys. Have a good one.